Let's dive into some cybersecurity basics. Today we're taking a look at TryHackMe, arguably the most popular cybersecurity training platform there is. If you're thinking about launching a cybersecurity career as a pen tester or just as a cybersecurity pro professional in, in general, you are in the right place. Now, I've been in the cybersecurity field for about 10 years or so, and I've watched these platforms evolve over time. In fact, I reviewed TryHackMe about four years ago, just when they were getting started. But how does it stack up today? So we're gonna find out. Now, TryHackMe started with a focus on penetration testing, which most of the cybersecurity platforms did at the time. But it did a great job at showing you the foundational skills required to get there. But now it's grown massively, covering everything from defensive cyber roles like Security Operations Center or SOC, and incident response, threat hunting, architecture, and even some GRC. One thing I really commend them on is their sheer amount of resources available. So what we'll go over in today's video is firstly an overview of TryHackMe. What is it? What is it good for? We'll go through the features and how to use them, then how you can get started on the platform, and lastly, should you use it? Is it worth your time and your money? So let's get into it. So when you go to the home site, this is what you'll see. If you haven't used the platform before, be sure to start an account. So when you sign up, you will the first thing you will see is this learn section here. And learn is the section where you are really guided step-by-step step in how to solve challenges. So this could be anything from penetration testing, how to do a port scan, to how to run an exploit or finding a piece of code that you have to update, to the defensive side as well. So what event code to look for, what executable was run, etc. So you'll find a whole bunch of learning paths here, which are centered around things like introduction to cybersecurity, their prerequisites, um, their pre-security path. What I like about TryHackMe is that they do have a very strong emphasis on learning the basics first, which is something that I often see overlooked by a lot of people wanting to break into the industry. They just want to instantly be an incident responder or they want to instantly be a pen tester with, without barely any technical experience at all. So TryHackMe does a great job in showing you the basics first. So when you go into the learn section, this is what you'll see. You'll see a bunch of learning paths focus around different things. So if you wanted to do SOC level one, then this would have a subset of smaller lessons for you to learn. So let's go through just that. If we went into SOC level one, we see a whole bunch of subjects within that course that we have to learn. In each of these subjects, you'll find a topic or what they call a room. If you go into a room, then you have the learning topics that you need to go through. So some of these entry level topics are very text-based. So you'll basically go through, you'll read the text and you'd answer some questions, but it's not all that dry. If you move into more, <coughs> if you went into more advanced topics, then you will start to see things like this, where you can start a machine and the vulnerable machine or the challenge essentially will start right in your browser without even opening a new window. It will just open to the right there. So this gives you a complete in-browser learning experience where you don't need to bring any virtual machines or open VPN connection files or anything like that. You can access this purely online through the browser. So as long as you have this website whitelisted at work, then you can do it at work with, with some training time if you have it. So when the lab then loads, you have a full instance of your virtual machine right in the browser and you can just access it just as if it was your real a real machine on your local computer or through remote desktop or through VPN. So this is really handy to just basically focus on learning rather than faffing about with all the technical requirements to get there. If you're not a fan of this, this split view, you can always just pop up, pop out the browser into a full, full screen, just like it was a real computer, but it's all just in a browser. So now back on the learn section, well, what do they have in terms of content? Well, so they have the pre-security path, which is really great to really iron out all those technical basics that you will need before you start picking up some cybersecurity stuff. You also have the complete, complete beginner, which goes through things like basic scripting, basic Linux, this type of stuff you'd do in a university degree. And then you get more, more advanced paths like your junior pen tester, your offensive pen testing and your red teaming if you want to go down the attack path, but also SOC level one, SOC level two for your more defensive paths as well. Now, because there's a lot of learning paths, it can be hard to see how they all fit in together. And this is where the learning roadmap comes in, where you see a logical progression from the computer science basics through to pre-security, cybersecurity 101 before it then branches out into your security analyst paths, your pen tester paths, or your security engineering paths. So this is a great way just to bring a bit more context to all of the existing learning paths. Now, this is the learn section. 
we haven't touched on the practice section yet. So practice is where try hack me becomes a little bit like hack the box. So this is where you have the challenges that you need to do and you have very little context as to what, what there is. So you're basically given a few questions, but then everything you have to do yourself. Now I will say the solutions for these, these machines aren't a tightly kept secret, like the solutions for active hack the box machines. So if you get stuck, you can always look for community walkthroughs for these. But the point is that you use these to really sharpen your skill and work end to end rather than the more handholdy guided mode in the learn section. Lastly, there is the module sections. This again is just a different way of categorizing a lot of the topics or rooms that TriHack may have. And it's a good way to focus on something in particular. So if you want to focus on how to get good with Linux, then you could do the Linux fundamentals. If you wanted to learn more things about incident response, then you have that. You don't need to go through the full learning path. So this is just a way where they've categorized the same topics just in a different way. So regardless of what you want to learn, the good thing about TriHack Me is that all of the topics or rooms are broken down into these bite-sized achievable labs generally within less than an hour. And couple that with the in-browser experience, it really does a lot in reducing that friction for you to actually sit down and to do some study. You can basically sit on the couch with your laptop with a free half hour or an hour and do some study. There's almost no excuse. So now onto gamification. So Hack the Box do a few things for this to really keep you engaged. You will see right here, you have the skills matrix. So as you continue to solve rooms, your skills matrix will continue to grow out. They also have a ranking se section, but really take this with a grain of salt. And they also have a hot streak. So for every day that you will solve a challenge, you basically get, get badges for the longer you go. And lastly, they have the levels section here. So I'm level nine and you basically get points for every room you solve to move up in levels. So the gamification side is definitely fun, but don't take it too seriously because solutions for everything on TriHack Me is widely available. And I almost forgot, they have the leaderboard section as well, which gets you on the hall of fame if you get into the top 50 users. This of course is by how many points you manage to get. So it could be fun to try to go for the leaderboard if that's what you'd like. So then how does this really stack up against the competition out there? Well, the closest competitor is Hack the Box and Hack the Box is definitely a very different platform. It's more focused on a lot more challenging uh, labs without much guiding or lessons. While Try Hack Me is more so focused on the teaching side, but then lacks a bit more in the challenging side. So my advice, typically start with Try Hack Me and move to Hack the Box when you feel like you want a bit more of a challenge. But if you wanted to stay on Try Hack Me, then it's great to learn things outside of the discipline that you choose. So if you're a penetration tester and you want to learn more defensive side, then you have that SOC level one and level two path to learn all the skills in defensive as well. So let's talk about pricing. Now the free option is actually pretty attractive. You get a lot of, you get individualized, personalized hackable instances. So every room that you do is unique for you. You get access to a lot of the hacking challenges, 500 free rooms and limited access to the attack box. So similarly to the hackable instance, you can also have the same to attack. But this is frustrating when you're following learning paths because you will not have access to everything in the syllabus. And this is when you will go to premium. Now this is $10.50 a month, so it is one of the cheaper options out there. You get full access to all of the paths, unlimited access to your, your attack box, again, dedicated machines, which are a bit faster. And you can also bring your own open VPN connection if you wanna bring your own machine. You have access to private King of the Hill games, which is a competitive option and access to networks, which are sort of similar to the Hack the Box Pro Lab. What I like about it is that there's no multi-structured tiering and everything is under one account and one price. Of course, their business option is a lot more expensive, but then you get the transferable licenses, the analytics and everything you would need as a manager as well. So now onto my good old pros and cons. So what's good? Well. It is perfectly good for beginners. It has such a great range of topics to learn for beginners, covers all your prerequisite knowledge. So if you have never touched a computer before and can just use a web browser, then you can start in cybersecurity. It is that good at providing that entry point. It is clear, it's easy to follow. The learning paths have a great range of topics and a different learning path for everybody. So if you want offensive, defensive architecture, a bit of both, you've, they've got you covered. Their gamified elements are good at keeping you back and it's at a really good price. But what's not so good is that it does struggle to keep more advanced users. 
Their content is definitely geared towards the beginner, maybe intermediate level, but anything more on the advanced side, you'd probably want to go to Hack the Box. And this is also the same for their community. It is certainly not as engaging and lively as the Hack the Box community, where it's really focused on those real novel niche exploits and really pushing the boundary. But it's not to say that the community on Try Hack Me isn't good as well. So as for the bottom line, TryHack Me is a must for anybody who is starting out in cybersecurity. It's affordable, accessible, and has something literally for everyone. But once you have reached that certain skill level, you might start to struggle to remain engaged with the platform, and you'd want to find something that can challenge you. Still, for getting st started, it is really hard to beat. And that pretty much covers everything. If you liked the video, be sure to leave me a like. Not only does it help me out, but it helps people like you find content like this. Leave me a comment as to what you're studying, I'd be really keen to know. And also, as always, if you're new here, click the subscribe button so you don't miss any future video. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.